So this is the last harvest video for winter. And winter actually has not been so bad this year. I think we've harvested about a thousand pounds worth of veg over winter, but that's nothing by comparison with the harvest levels that we're going to start seeing in March. We'll probably harvest close to a thousand pounds just in March and early April this year, I'm guessing. And you know, that is just such a dramatic change. And it's not just the volume of the harvest, it's the quality of the harvest. You know, the leaves are thicker, the leaves are crisper, the purple spread in broccoli, you know, the, the buds are much bigger, you know, the leaf quality again is so much better. We'll probably see the first uh, broad beans in spring, the first strawberries in spring, the first peas in spring. It is such a vibrant and exciting time to be gardening. So. I'm going to take you around, just show you the last sort of dregs of winter as we kind of go around and uh, look forward to the delights of spring. So before we do the harvest, I thought I'd just show you the broad beans in the polytunnel. So this is my first time growing broad beans in here for an early crop. And there's just loads and loads of flowers on them. So it's quite exciting. I'm not quite sure about pollinating broad beans, but uh, I'm just tickling them with my fingers and hoping that that's enough. Oh, just look at all those strawberries. It won't be long now before these really burst into life. So I always start the harvest with the root crops. And we haven't got very many now. We're down basically to carrots and uh, what else have we got? Potatoes, no more parsnips, no uh, ochre, no um, artichokes, but we will have radish next week, so it's not so bad. So we've got a good crop of carrots here. Uh, I am just pulling about two rows a week between now and the end of April. And these, this variety is Eskimo. And I'm pretty pleased oh, with the size the way they hold in the ground. I kind of plant quite closely because I do want quite a few carrots for salads and obviously I don't want giant great big salads and carrots like that in my salad anyway. So I kind of hope for quite a few of this sort of size. Anyway, I'll get on and pull those. You can see them later. So those are looking pretty good. So it's slightly nerve wracking, you know, when you're doing carrots because, you know, I've got all these left and a few more in the polytunnel. And at some point, of course, these are gonna to go to seed. And the last thing I want is to kind of save some of this bed, you know, like save it, hoping I'm gonna be able to harvest it all the way through April, and then find the whole lot just goes to seed on me. So, uh, yeah. But then of course, you know, I don't wanna to pick too much because there's only so many carrots we can eat. So wherever we get space, that we can't find anything else to plant in winter. We plant field beans and we harvest just these beautiful tips. And I'm clearing quite a few of those beds now to make way for spring planting. So we end up with loads and loads of them at this time of year. So I'm also taking the tops off these collets and these are just like, <laughs> I just love them. They're just so tender. They're just like a massive collet really gorgeous of course the collets are not too shabby either in masses of new growth on the perennial kales and i just love these young tender leaves like this i'll just be taking you know i don't know 20 of these off each plant something like that i wouldn't they can't sustain that level of harvest for a long period but you know right now is Kind of when we need them so we let them build up their strength for this time of year harvest them hard and then kind of let them recover so one of my main areas to improve is the purple spread in broccoli that we grow for a winter harvest a kind of early winter harvest but as we head into spring i'm quite really happy with the kind of harvest we get and uh, these are just gorgeous and we make sure to pick a good few leaves to go with them as well. So I'm thrilled with that. Just like we're in a race against time with the carrots, we're also in a race against time with the leeks. 
and you can see the odd one there and there's another one maybe two going to seed so again we can't kind of save the leeks we have to harvest them you know really all of them i suppose through march i don't think many of them will last till april and hopefully the uh, green garlic will be ready in april and the elephant garlic so we can switch over to those so we did have two weeks where we were a bit short of salad onions we only had enough for debbie and i but uh, fortunately this bed is now ready and since i'm planting asian greens in here i don't really want these to uh, stay in here for more than two or three weeks so i shall get these cleared pretty soon and that is a much nicer harvest so we don't have many bustle sprouts now but what we do have are these blown sprouts which are a bit like a green colette and i actually like these more than bustle sprouts so i always leave quite a lot on the plant to harvest at this stage and they're absolutely gorgeous so like this so i've just been giving a tour to some visitors so i've been harvesting at the same time so just missed the parsley harvest which is lovely and i have to keep on top of this at the moment because it's growing so fast and the colette harvest and I'm just taking stripping the stems i've got about 18 18 more plants still to go this is one of my oldest spinach beds i think we've taken about 15 harvests off this so far and now i'm harvesting completely every other plant to make way for my early parsnips and then in another week or so i'll harvest every other plant to make place make space for uh, onion seedlings so that's cleared that bed so that's enough for about 30 parsnips and about 90 onions so that's enough to see us through all of autumn and then this little spinach bed is also being cleared and this is to make way for my early bustle sprouts so this is my first harvest of the spring lettuces these were planted in december sown in november i'm really pleased with the quality of these and then the last little harvest from the allotment just a bit of chard the chard actually outside has had a bit of a battering so the only stuff that's ready for harvest is in the tunnel right now so we don't have many brassicas on the allotment now not in terms of like leafy greens but we've still got loads and loads in the back garden so we're not go short and we've got some collects there in reserve as well and we've still got a nice little crop of lamb's lettuce here and the dregs of the claytonia which i will be taking out soon these clumps aren't too bad because they were um cut and so they've all regrown i think this is the third regrowth on them but it's a pretty big bed so i've still got about two and a half months worth of potatoes here a mix of sarpameras and charlottes i thought i'd just show you these charlottes because a lot of people say that charlottes only grow at one level but this is a great example of uh, how you can see them growing all the way through this uh, compost and all the way through to the top here so uh, they definitely don't grow at one level and it's always a bit hard to believe really that these potatoes have just sat in the compost since september really when they finished absolutely gorgeous so here we are with what looks like i think the first spring-like harvest and for those of you who have followed along week by week 
through my sort of trials and tribulations thinking how much should I harvest? Am I harvesting enough? I'm harvesting too little. I think I've done all right managing through winter. So I'll just talk you through what we've got. Quite a nice selection this week. So these are the Charlotte potatoes, one tub. Those are the Sarpameras that got that kind of blight. I don't know, it wasn't late blight, but anyway, so you didn't get a very big harvest of those. Again, one tub. Obviously the winter squash, Crown Prince. Beetroot from the store all down here, shallots from the store, red onions from the store, white onions from the store, uh, carrots fresh from the ground, mix of salad carrots and cooking carrots, leeks from the ground, all of these massive pile of mixed brassica leaves, all sorts, you saw me harvesting those. Um, Collettes, more collettes, more collettes, more collettes, plenty of them. Parsley, chard, uh, yakon, ochre, Jerusalem artichokes, more carrots, and then all oh, this is spinach. So spinach, spinach, those are spinach. Those are all spinach. Gorgeous purple spreading broccoli, field bean tops, tips. And then these are all from here, the lettuces down here. And then on top of the lettuces, the salad onions, the miner's lettuce and the lamb's lettuce. So that is a pretty good harvest and it's only going up from here on in. So everybody is always going to ask, how do you eat all that? <laughs> well, it's for us and our family. Right now we're feeding 14 people. So that is enough for 14 people, but it's not excessive. Um, Debbie and I will eat about third of, of that probably in a week maybe a little bit more and say so the rest goes to family how do we store it well it's all bag packed up into these two litre containers which we got from home bargains and they're made by Addis they're one pound each and stored sealed and damp but not wet everything lasts for a week and then we pick again in a week's time so that's how we store everything everything sealed in the fridge of course apart from this stuff here which was already in the store and doesn't need to be in the fridge it's just fine find the red onions are keeping better than the white onions i don't know we haven't got very many white onions left now uh, we've got plenty of beetroot left, plenty of shallots left, plenty of red onions left. Only a few. Um, Crown Prince squash left. Loads and loads of potatoes. So anyway, we'll get through. We will have new season potatoes before we run out of old season potatoes. New season beetroot before we run out of old season beetroot. Uh, elephant garlic and green garlic before we run out of leeks. And that's the way it goes. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.